I'm sorry. Uh, yes. Is there anything can be done about this? Done? I don't understand. You know, I hear things are done. Things are done. What is this? Are you trying to bribe no. me? No. You think you can bribe no, me? Do I, I look like I can be bribed? No, I was paying Are you trying advance. to bribe a pharmacist? No, no I'm paying in advance. Don't... Take your money! Nobody bribes a pharmacist! Get out! Right now! I'm so... I'm... Security! Security! I'll remember you, buddy! So here we are. I'm Susie Essman. Who are you? I'm Jeff Garland, one of America's top teens. And what are we doing? We're making, uh... Ambrosia. The history. That'll come up next. It next does day. come up the next. We're doing the history of, of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And we're doing episode season one, episode nine, Affirmative yes. Action. Yes. It's it's really funny. Well, uh, like I, this I one's love, really funny and interesting. It, very interesting. And in so many levels, you know. Um, By the way, this episode, I talked earlier a bunch of episodes back that the only person you can compare that Larry compares to is a guy named Nat Hyken. Right. And Nat Hyken, we said, does Bill go car 54? Are you? And mind you, these are 1950s, early 60s shows. So I expect most of you have never seen them, but if you find them, please, you'll be very happy. Anyhow, Nat Hyken is like, it goes all over the place and then you don't know where it's going to end. And this one went Was all one of over those, the place. Yeah. yeah. And I so love, I have comments about I it. love that it opens up with LD, with Larry on the phone. He's on the phone with Richard Lewis. And the first line is, did I do something? Well, by the way, when my wife, my ex-wife, uh, my girlfriend or anyone says my name, I go, what did I do? What did I do? I think it's a Jewish, <laughs> I think it's a Jewish men's thing. The what did I do? What did I do? But when I was taken aback by, and I didn't notice them, we're doing, I'm focusing on the bigger picture. Larry does really good phone work. It's he not does. easy to act like you're in a conversation. And that's a believable conversation. Yeah. And one of my pet peeves, and I hate the term pet peeve, so that should be a pet peeve. Is, um, it, a fu- is it also is, a fun fact, Jeff? Uh, no, it's okay. an interesting fact, I think. But also, now here's a fun fact. This is follows with a fun fact. Um, I will watch a show and no how, matter how I'm involved in it, when two characters are drinking coffee, if they do bad coffee work, I'm out. I'm out. The minute I know there's nothing in their cup and they're faking coffee, I leave. That's, I swear to God, but that's you know, how insane I think I that's the nature of being in the business. I think most people don't notice those things. Oh, there's no, a, no, no. A lot most of continuity stuff notice. that people don't Hold even on. notice. Curb your enthusiasm. Has there ever been a time where there hasn't been water or something else in your glass? Always. Yeah. We never have to mime it. No. And by the way, because that's a good I'm, prop I, person. That's a great prop person. You know, there, and, there are so and, many people uh, that go into doing their job to make a show, to make a movie. There's hundreds of people on a crew and they are all completely focused on what they do. Well, that being said, if they're, if an actor is so focused on what they do, why do they not say, can I have some water in my cup? Or be as humble to say, I'm not good at coffee drinking on Unless the screen. I need water in it for, for girth. You need girth. All right, let's yeah, move but on. Yeah, but it is interesting to me. When when you're on a set, you know, uh, Thomas, our makeup artist, all he's looking at is my makeup wardrobe. All they're looking at is my wardrobe. Everybody has a very specific job. I very much understand. And, the, and the, 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 two, the two people, the three people on a set that should be noticing everything are the actor, because if you're so self-involved, you're not going to be present in the scene. The director, obviously, and any good producer. And the script person. Well, Scripty pays attention to what's being said. Right. Or on our show, uh, it's a and, nightmare. And they have not to just write what's being in. said, but also, are, am I holding my arm like this in the last scene? Or is it, is it you know, on my head is, you know, continuity. Right. Which we yeah. have never been great at on Curb. And I think it's hard for us but because we improvise. I've told you that uh, in the words of, I believe Francis Ford Coppola, uh, um, I'm not sure if it's him. Continuity is for pussies. Okay. So if you're noticing mistakes, we're not doing a good job. But, you know, if you're noticing continuity, 
Whatever you're watching isn't that good. Yeah, unless it's egregious, obviously. So, all right. So we start. We start out with the with Larry's on the phone with Lewis. Did I do something? And Lewis wants to meet him in person. Not it doesn't want to talk about it on the phone. Lewis has an issue and wants to meet Larry in person. And Larry's like, "Why do we have to meet in person?" But they do. And then Cheryl gives Larry a prescription. Cheryl's scratchy, scratchy, scratchy. She has dermatitis and she's scratching the entire episode. And she has a, a, a contact dermatitis and she gives Larry a prescription to fill for her when he goes to meet Lewis. You know, you know, n- no good, n- nothing good is going to come of him having her prescription. Obviously. By the way, little do we know of what that actually means. What? Uh, no, when you say that's that. the beauty of it. But also uh, Cheryl... Um, he says to Cheryl, she says, uh, will you pick me up and we'll go to the restaurant? He says, can't you meet me there? I need you to meet me there. And um, uh, it's so from two standpoints. One is from Larry's point of view, the Larry, the character, which, by the way, at the end credits, I'll say this now so I don't forget. It says Larry David as himself, which is completely wrong. It's a it's fictionalized misleading. Larry David. Yeah. And yeah, and we, we took it out. I'll see if we took it out the second season, but I don't think it lasted past the first season. Um, but anyhow, he uh, asked her to take a cab, have the housekeeper, driver, what have you. Free Uber. Uh, pre well by the way i want to talk about that i'm going to bring that up later anyhow um uh, she is frustrated with him because he gives her excuse it's too far to come back blah 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 and she says okay now i don't know a woman that i've ever been with that would be okay with that Cheryl is a freak of nature. And by the way, I believe her saying okay, because that's her character and also she's not jewish so i believe that she what should, are you that's saying why, about Jewish women, Jeff? I'm saying that a lot of men don't marry Jewish women. Let's leave it as that. <laughs> but I happily married a Jewish woman, even caught though, and my girlfriend's Jewish, and I am in a great deal of pain at all times. I'm not saying it's due to them. I know it's not due to them. I'm I bipolar. Know, I know for a fact I have it's lots not of due issues. to them. For <laughs> a not, fact. Oh, oh, do you? Yes. All right. And the fact that you're one of my you know, best friends you know what's in so the funny? world, when we maybe sh- even my best friend <laughs> that I can count on, and you're a Jewish woman, but you're different. And you know, when you give me shit, I know it's the real deal. When we were, we were shooting, we're in the middle, I, we've said this before, but I'll reiterate, we're in the middle of shooting right now, season 12, and we were shooting with Cheryl the other day and there was a scene where she was, Larry was doing something and she was just like, okay, okay. And when she came off the set, same off set, I said to her, Cheryl, how many times have you said that responding to Larry? Like, okay, okay. That exact thing that she does. She's been doing it since season one. She certainly has. But yeah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things in all of these episodes that, that date, that date us. You know, in terms of right. like that that season with the the, the episode Porno Gill, no nav system. Um, this one, you know, no Uber. It's, it's a lot of things like that. This is 2000 right. that we shot this. Is this one with the nav system or is the next one with the navigation uh, system? I think no, I don't this know. We'll one, get to I, it. I don't remember. It might be okay. this one. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so it is this one. She gives him the script. They She's going to meet him at the restaurant at six o'clock. And, and Larry goes to meet Lewis in Santa Monica. Okay, were you struck by Lewis's outfit? He's got the big padded uh, shoulders in his jacket. By the way, he's uh, got the Hendrix no, tie. Hold on, I, I agree with you a hundred percent, but I I wasn't struck by it because I remember you, you weren't there that day. I remember it so vividly. We were on Santa Monica Beach on the upper part where you walk, yeah. and across that from outfit, where I'm living here's what now. I will say in terms of dated, it looked normal to me. Although that look has never looked normal to me. I'm more of a blue jeans and t-shirt guy because yeah. that never goes out of style, or a white cotton button-down shirt with jeans. Uh, but the you know pad, what I'm saying? He had the big padded shoulders. But in that that's jacket. what the that's what the style was then, and it was absurd. It was, and and the Hendrix tie, which is his thing, um, and then yeah, Lewis. He probably owns that tie, uh, probably. And then Lewis, uh, Lewis has something to tell Larry, and he's telling it to him because his shrink told him to. Con- there's something bothering Lewis, yeah. and his shrink well, by told the way, him that's a normal to confront thing him. That your therapist would say, maybe you want to express that. Um, yeah. And what was bothering him is that Larry never calls him. You never call me. You never call me. Okay. <laughs> He's the initiator is yeah. what he said, right? Yeah. So 
I have some friends that I know I'm also the initiator constantly. I love all these people. I don't believe I have resentments from any of them because they're all crazy successful and crazy busy. And by the way, they're great responders. But they I don't, don't have initiate. to actually, no, one's a terrible responder, but the ones I contact mostly who live here in LA, the one in New York is a bad responder, but the two in LA, great responders. So the fact that they respond with positivity and love, I'm okay with it, but I'm always thinking initiator. I am always thinking. So I don't remember, I didn't remember this until I saw it. And I thought, wow, man, if Larry doesn't cover everything of the human condition, I don't know who does. I mean, that is just, I loved it. Initiator. Yeah. I agree. And well, because and later on, something else comes up. Uh, oh, actually, that's the next episode. But everything's a negotiation in life, you know, in Larry's life, in all of our lives, whether it's who calls who, who wants to have sex, what everything's yeah, but a negotiation. With Larry, I think it's it's more of a reactive interaction, meaning he only initiates because he's stuck to initiate. You know, he, I, I guarantee Larry David has never thought with a friend of his, oh, why am I always initiating? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe it happened once and he noticed it and wrote it down, you know, but he's a reactor and he's put in situations because he, uh, it, 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 um, I don't remember what I was going to say. Okay. Well, right. anyway, so Lewis confronts him and he says, you never call me. And 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 he says, it's Sophia, isn't it? Because LD is not coming uh, comfortable if Sophia picks up the phone, of course, because they had that big fight back in episode one in the pants tent. They had a big fight in episode one. Lewis is still seeing her, which is amazing after all these seasons, um, the, uh, episodes. Yeah. And no, no, Richard, no, you, you, sound, you sound like all these seasons, the first season. Yeah, all and these the way episodes you make is it what sound I meant. Is that he's really seeing her. Yeah. Well, he's she is. She is living at his woman. house now. Um, no, no, in the show. In the show. But the yeah. way you said it earlier, you said after all these years, Lewis is still dating her. He never dated it her. Seems like a, it seems like a long time even in showtime, for him to be, have been with the same woman. Because that was oh, episode right. yes, one, yes, yes. and now this is episode And maybe nine. our listeners got that, and yeah. I was ignorant, which is highly likely. And they decide that Larry and Cheryl, that Larry invites them to meet for dinner. He says they can't, they have something. They decide they're going to stop there for dessert after dinner at Byzantine. I, I always, as I always do this, I want to go back to the initiating thing. Yeah. And Larry explains it's your girlfriend. You know that the Richard character, not the Richard I know in real life, but the Richard character, anytime Larry and, I, Larry and he would have plans for lunch, he probably would have wanted to bring Sophia. So Larry, they, they make a plan to come over for dessert. And then a man dry, uh, jogs by and, and Lewis screams out, hey, Justin, it's, it's his friend, Justin, um, Grams or something like that. And uh, he happens to be African-American. And Larry introduces him. I, I mean, Lewis introduces him to Larry as his dermatologist. And Larry says... Hey, man. What's happening? Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. I'm funky. I'm funky. Dr. Grams, this is my friend Larry David. Hi. How He's you my doing? my dermatologist. Hi. Really? Oh, yeah. What? For 15 years already? Even with the whole affirmative action thing? Uh, I'm sorry. I beg what? your pardon? What? No, he did. What do you mean? What was the joke? What? What, do you, what do you mean the whole affirmative action thing? I, I don't. Oh. Right. It was a, it was a joke. Oh, no, no, he's, joke. he's like Wait, that buddy. Hey, he's, come he's on, like, no, 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 no. no, 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 no I know him. I mean, he's he's a sweetheart. Which is a joke that I still don't get. Yeah, you know what? It's a tough joke. It's a tough joke. I think what well, he maybe meant, that was I'm sure that was done purposely. Yeah, what he meant to say it was a bad joke. What he meant to be I I think what he was saying was you would go to this guy knowing that he only got into medical school because of affirmative oh, action. Oh yes, yes, that's the implication. That's the Boy, implication. Why is that a bad joke? Yeah, it's a bad it's joke. It's a bad and, bad and joke. And it had to be a bad joke. Yeah. Because of course the dermatologist Justin takes offense to it. And right. and uh, as he should because it's because uh, who would understand a joke like that? Right. Because if let's say I'm standing next to him, whether in real uh, in real life, Larry would never do something like that. But in character, I would say to him over and over, "Why would you say that? Why would you say that? Yeah. That's insane." But after the guy left, yes. 
but it was it was uh, you know my my curiosity about and, and Larry's just I was just trying to be affable I was just trying to be affable and he uses that word several times my um my my question that I have is could we do this episode today most definitely I think today it has more resonance mm-hmm. than it did then. Oh, my God. Yes, you could. Uh, well, we'll get to it. But I think without a doubt you could with him, because it's about him being well-meaning but ignorant. Right. And then the he says, and that. then he says one of my favorite lines, I tend to say stupid things to black people. Larry says that to Lewis. Because well, he's nervous. I tend to say stupid things to black people. And it happens to be true. There are many incidents coming up in many other seasons where he tends to say stupid things to black people. Well, think about the hour pilot slash special early on a black guy walks by and he nods and he says i tend to nod at black black people people, right not that a black person would notice just some guy nodding maybe he knows and maybe he doesn't but i think the line of that scene is you sounded like pat buchanan's Buchanan's gym partner partner. (laughs) i thought i never noticed it when we did it and i thought that is so classic richard lewis it's such a lewis line it is it is also it's brilliant yeah it's so succinct and brilliant he he comes up with things like that all the time but for for those of of you listening uh pat buchanan today could be comparable to Ted Cruz or someone along those lines. You sound like Ted Cruz's gin partner, although it's not as funny with Ted Cruz, even though you got the K sound. Pat Buchanan, it was perfect. Or Sean Hannity, somebody like that. Sean, yeah, yeah Sean yeah. Hannity. Yeah. And I don't even want to mention the other guy. Yeah, we won't even mention right. the disgraziat. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. okay. So, Larry, I was just trying to be affable. I was just trying to be affable. And then he goes, they, oh, then they're in the restaurant and Cheryl's scratching, scratching, scratching. And obviously he didn't fill her script. We knew after he, he offended the, the dermatologist, we knew that script was never going to get, that prescription was never going to get filled. And he, again, he's, he's, he's defending himself by saying, I was trying too hard to be affable, trying too hard to be affable. But he was um, also, let's be honest here. His wife has a medical condition Correct. and he's too self-involved to even notice, you know, like the real Larry David, unless unless there's something extraordinary, he would not forget. He would be thoughtful. If his wife said, please do this prescription for me, he might be, uh, really, you can't get anyone else to do it. But nonetheless, if he's with he the, has the task, he would totally do it. But then the, there's no story. So. Yeah, no, he no, I have a big ball of with you. And no, he's no, trying to be, and they're and at then, the restaurant. There's a long wait for the wait, restaurant. Wait, wait, again, I have to go back. Go, go. What happens again here? Cheryl's understanding. What the yeah, hell? Yeah, but she's getting pissed <laughs> off, Jeff. You see in her face, she's getting yes, really annoyed. but she never explodes. But I'm saying, she's like, all right, let's, you know. Oh, my God. Well, but of course, yeah. but of course, you know what? He wrote that character to be the fantasy wife that would be understanding. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he wrote my character to be the shrew. No, he gave you a premise for your character because you came up with your character, but the premise was your behavior, but you came up with it. Same with Cheryl. This show, everybody came up with their own characters. Larry gave everybody the premise to run with it. Now, if he didn't like what you were doing, that's totally different. I wouldn't still be so here I in think, season 12. Yeah, right, if he didn't, but he obviously yeah. would kill him. Um, whereas Cheryl, I think, just played it true to herself. Right. But I that's think. why, I but I, I think that's part of why she got the part because she had that steadiness. No, actually, to her. it's the opposite why she got the part because I was in the casting session when she came in. She was the only one, only one that didn't kowtow to Larry. She called him out on his shit. And I know, but she Larry does that as the hard. character, Jeff. She does call I, him out on his shit. No, no, but I she's know, very I know even. That. I know she's even. We didn't know that then. Yeah. Okay. It wasn't like, oh, she's even. She was obviously really great. You could see it, that there was something going on here. Right. That being said, um, everyone else sort of played up to Larry, had fun with Larry, and all the things Larry did. There was something about eating a bowl of cereal for the scenario. I don't remember what it was, but she really, like, really gave it right back to Larry, everything he said. And he would laugh constantly. Boom. When she left the room, 
it was evident, you know, she was going to get the part. I don't remember if he said, I think he, she was the quickest person he ever cast. And know that before she came in, we looked, I'd say 15 to 20, at 15 to 20 actresses, improvisers. So uh, there's a 45 minute wait for a seat at yes. the restaurant. And yes. LD, Larry decides he's going to schmear the guy. And he's the most awkward schmearer. I've ever he folds up a $20 bill. And by the bill. way, that is real life. I can't By the way, I can't even imagine him walking up I know. and handing somebody money. That's so out of but his character. But he folds it up into a very small little thing and then just kind of shoves it across the po- the maitre d' podium. And they get it right. uh, lo and behold, it works and they get a table. And Larry says to Cheryl, women are attracted to criminals. Larry sees a, a guy in a wheelchair and says, how can a handicapped person use a non-motorized wheelchair? <laughs> it was just like this throwaway thing. Well, you know what I think? But he's appalled you know by I, that. <laughs> okay, but I have a theory about this. Tell me. That he's seen that situation a, a dozen times yeah. before easy in his life. And he's already thought that. Absolutely. Because he always pictures himself in the situation. That's where he's very empathetic. What would I do, which is, again, narcissistic, but nonetheless, what would I, is that narcissistic? I don't know. Only a therapist could tell me. But the point being is that he has probably seen that a dozen times, and the opportunity to put that in the show is delightful. Right. That's That was my take as well. Um, he sees uh, Ted Harbert, who's an ABC executive sitting over. And this was the part that just killed me. Larry needs to go to the bathroom, but he doesn't want to run into Ted Harbert because he's a boring guy and he's going to get stuck in a conversation. So he leaves the restaurant, goes two doors down to use a bathroom in another restaurant, in a Mexican restaurant well, down you, the block. You know what? I think most people, and when I say most people, I mean 99% of other people would never avoid going to the bathroom because somebody has is full of small talk. As a matter of fact, my thing, so I wouldn't be stopped, would be to go to the, tell them when I see them, I'll be right back. I'm going to use the restroom. Come back and listen to whatever the bullshit is and sit sit down. Larry Dave is one of the few people to avoid that situation. We'll go all the way out of his way. Around. Yes, You know, there's hilarious. an art to extricating yourself from a conversation. My husband does not have this ability. I am very good at it. My husband has to stop and talk to the doormen. He feels obligated in that way that Larry would. I'm just like, hi. And I keep walking. Polite. Nice. Mm -hmm. But just extricate yourself. And there's nothing wrong with saying, sorry, I can't talk right now. I'm in the middle of my having dinner with my wife. Well, your husband is a true mensch. You know that, right? But as is Larry. But he has to go two doors down to the bathroom. So he goes to the Mexican restaurant. And there's a woman. In the hallway, when he comes out of the bathroom, uh, again, an African-American woman uh, who uh, was up for a job on sour grapes as a script supervisor, and she didn't get it. And she really berates Larry and calls him a racist and all sign- kinds of other things. And, you know, goes on and on about Seinfeld not having one black girlfriend and there was not one black person on the show, all of which is true. And Larry's very aware of that. And she's accusing him of racism. And he he uh, he's quite taken aback and he goes back to the other restaurant two doors down and he sits down and who walks over Ted Harbert and starts talking boring hold conversation. On, hold, about on, golf. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to wait on the woman. She was magnificent. Terrific. The woman who was a line producer. And she said one thing that always made Larry laugh at the end of her harangue uh, scene with harangue. She said, Mr. Larry David, good night or whatever. Yeah. But when she said, Mr. Larry David, not only did Larry laugh, but he repeated that to himself all the rest of the time we're filming. He would look at me and go, Mr. Larry David, because <laughs> it struck him as so funny. But she was amazing. And by the way, there are those situations, especially situations, especially now where you don't think of yourself as racist and you have a good heart and you're unintentionally being racist or you're insensitive to what's going on in the world. And what what he did was he did a form of nepotism. He wasn't related to this man. But if he didn't hire the, the man for the line producer, Cheryl, I'm not going to say would have been mad at him, but she would have been slightly well, yeah, upset. Let me just say that I, I didn't mention that the guy, Barry, who got the job was a friend of Cheryl's. 
Yes. So, yeah. So, you all, but whenever you do nepotism, there's either resentment from whoever they're working with. Oh, I know how you got this job, or uh, I don't know. So they go back and they he gets stuck in a boring conversation with uh, with Ted Harbert, and um, then they uh, they they then they decide to go to the drugstore to get the wait 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 I I I, I apologize for always interrupting you I but don't I want to say interrupt me that's the whole point okay the be- the beautiful thing is. He went to the other restaurant but, but then to avoid Ted, yeah. Ted Arbert. He had a situation at the restaurant that was a million times worse than anything that could have happened with Ted Harbert. And lo and behold, Ted Harbert walks up to the table. So Larry David, Can't win. the character, when it rains, it pours. Right. And yes. And by the way, Ted Harbert did a great job. He's a real guy. Yeah. And he did a great job. We didn't let it go on too long because he asked him about the golf game, which was incredibly boring and yeah. whatever. So we faded out knowing full well that it was going on small, and on yes, and on. Small talk. Yes. It was aggressively right. boring. And yes. they, they're, they're in the car and they're on their way to uh, go to the pharmacy to get the prescription filled. Yes. Larry supposedly still has the prescription and he goes into this whole thing in the car. Why don't we just call your doctor? Because you can't call my doctor on the weekends unless it's a life-threatening emergency. What? Yeah. If you call his machine, it'll tell you you can't page him. That's what it, that you called up and that's what it said? Yeah. That is obscene. You know that? Can't disturb the doctor on the weekend. Don't call the doctor Zappler on the weekend unless it's life-threatening. Norman! Okay, Is yeah, somebody okay. calling? Yeah, I Who's it. calling? We're in the middle of dinner, Norman! This better be life-threatening, Norman. I'm not going to leave this Larry, house. Come on, please. I'm begging you. Norman, unless they were burned in a fire, I don't want you getting up from your chair. Do you understand, Norman? Oh. But that whole thing cracked me up. Norman imitating the wife. Doing, imitating <laughs> yeah, the doctor's yeah. wife. Norman, you can't pick up the phone. <laughs> Norman. Yeah, doing the wife. Don't call the doctor over the weekend. Can't unless, call the doctor And by the way, the, the thing weekend. that he closed with... <laughs> no, unless somebody's on surviving from being on fire, don't call the doctor. It has on the to weekend. be an emergency. Really funny. Yeah. Yes. Um, they get to the pharmacy. He can't. And find by it. the way, that's comedian thinking, if I will. Yes. If I may. And it, and you lots can, of will comedians do this, may. not just Larry. Larry can't find the prescription at the pharmacy. So yes. uh, they decide he realizes because he pulls out of his pocket a 20 all folded up into a little tiny little square. He realizes he gave the maitre d' the prescription right. and not the $20 yes. bill. So they have to go back yes. to the restaurant now. It's, it's always yes. this. It's always going back and, you know, and um, and the maitre d' said he threw it. It was very nonplussed and he threw the 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 prescription in the garbage and then they have to go back into the kitchen and go through the filthy, disgusting garbage and there's no prescription. What are they going to do? So then uh, I forgot which one. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Cheryl, I think, comes up with what about Richard's friends, the dermatologist? And they're on their way to Richard's house anyway. Maybe the the guy that Larry completely offended, they now have to ask for a prescription because Cheryl's really, really uncomfortable. So they go to Richard's house and Sophia's on the phone. Not a cell phone, a regular phone. (laughs) Again, it's the year Mm -hmm. 2000, a regular phone. And um, Lewis Lewis fights with Sophia to get off the phone because they need to use the phone to call the doctor to get the prescription. And then uh, she hangs up very upset because she was on the phone with her agent. And Sophia and Larry go through a pantomime, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, giving each other the finger and really hating each other. Okay, before we get to that, a couple of things. When they're at the door and Richard lets them in, she's in the background on the phone and they say, we need to to talk about there is a problem. Like, don't don't hug me. Don't shake Cheryl. Don't shake my hand. Yeah. And Richard, as he's walking away, uh, don't worry, we'll we'll talk it out. We'll talk it out. <laughs> Which is so he's so therapized. And then he's so he therapized. gets into a fight. He gets into a big fight with his girlfriend because it's important. They explain the it's thing a medical to Richard, emergency. and he knows it, and he knows it's important. And she does, and she's on the phone. We find out with her agent, but Richard at this moment has dived in to help his friend. 
dived in. He's being the great friend that he is in, uh, on camera and off. And he does it. So I want to establish that as you continue what you're saying. Okay. So, and then, you know, they do this big fuck you fest, Larry and Sophia, right. which is hilarious. And then they, he calls the doctor and the doctor said, "If I can't just do it over the phone. If they want a prescription, they have to come over to my house. This is where they use the nav, Jeff. I see in my notes where Larry well, figures but, but, out but the navigation. Wait, here's, here's the reason. Hold on. This is where I set up the setup because what I want to say is Richard, you see, Larry does this to other people who he doesn't realize the damage that might happen to the other person. So Richard gets into a fight and his girlfriend, uh, Italian, gets mad. And see, I'm always throwing in who gets angry. Uh, in terms of real anger, Italians, Jews, etc. By the way, there are exceptions. All right. Nonetheless, his Italian girlfriend is furious at him for doing this. And so Richard had good intentions. And what he did was help his friend, but to the detriment of his relationship, which, you know, at some point will come up with Larry. Although not in this episode. Because always in this show, no good deed goes unpunished. That's just no, the way it is. No good deed doesn't punish, whether it's Larry or other people. Or other people. And yeah. um, so now they're using the navigation to get to the doctor's office. And Larry is, says, Right turn ahead. Ah! Ah, ah, ah! Did you hear that? Yeah, I did hear it. The navigation system. I figured it out. It's working. It's telling us exactly how to go to the doctor's house. Oh. I can't wait to call my parents. They are gonna be so proud of me. When I tell my father I figured out that navigation system, he's gonna flip his wig. And he's got one too. Can we turn oh, on the radio? Oh, he's gonna be very proud of Larry figuring out the navigation system. Please. Daddy, I'm not so stupid. Which I found interesting. <laughs> well, Richard also said in the setup a great joke that I wanna point out that he was talking about the way Larry behaved with his friend. And he said, The only guy I could think of is your friend from yeah. the dermatologist. The he's, a, he's a dermatologist. Justin? Yeah. Maybe if you could just call him and he could what? call in a prescription. And Wow. I'm, I mean, you can imagine. I mean, really, you were like, you know, James Earl Ray today. I He's know, funny. I know. I'll do it. I, I you uh, know, I'll do it. I'm not, doing it. I love it. It's not doing for me. It. Just tell him I'll apologize. What are you, James Earl Ray? Ray James Earl Ray. He did James Earl Ray reference in a casual way with something else, playing cards with James Earl Ray, whatever. And James Earl Ray is the man who killed Martin Luther he, King. He's very, he's <sighs> very big on the references, Lewis, and By very the way, funny. I, as a fan, I live for them. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 okay. So now they um, get to the doctor's house and, um, oh, wait, wait, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. You're skipping the other thing. What? The navigation, which you I mentioned. Just mentioned. Yeah. But what's amazing about that is it's such a big deal. And I guarantee, and I'm pretty sure that I experienced with this with Larry, he did not know how to use the navigation. And to be honest, most people didn't, it was very confusing. And so, you look back at those moments and now navigation is like breathing. Everybody can navigate. Sometimes it's hard to do the voice version of navigation. It doesn't quite work. Um, but it's like, I remember Uber. Uh, a friend of mine told me very early on, he goes, I'm going to turn you on to something, pick up this app and Uber. And at that point, Uber, nobody, nobody had a clue what Uber was. And he goes, you can't tell anyone. It's our secret. Well, lo and behold, it's everybody's secret yeah. now. But I remember doing Uber references on stage to silence. No reaction it's the to this thing. It's, it's fascinating yeah. to watch these shows yeah. from 2000 and see the phone attached right. to the wall and yeah. see that not knowing how to use the nav and no cell phones. Um, because it, it it all feels very contemporary to me, except for these little pieces. You know, the right. whole show no. feels very relevant, it, 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 except for these like little... Like I said, you said, can we do the show today? And yes, you know, we have to cut the navigation and maybe a few more things, but nothing about race. That's all beautiful. Yeah. Um, so Anytime they, there's white ignorance and it's pointed out comedically and with anger, always funny. So Larry goes to the doctor's house. And he apologizes. And they were like, what did you say? What did you say? He doesn't want to say what it is. And there's, what, what is it, eight, ten people sitting around? And and Becca yes. asked me, is the conversation with all the guests, was all of that improvised? I assume so. By the way, it was completely improvised. Yeah. I mean, there was intention. They're mad at Larry 
you know, let Larry know. And you, and Larry, but also, just when you see the group, the wife is actually giving them kind of a hard time. Well, the best laid plans, blah, blah, blah. So she's not making it easy, and you can tell she's irritated. <laughs> Larry walks into a room with a bunch of black people having some sort of dinner party or meeting. He doesn't know what, but he knows this is going to be in trouble. crazy awkward. Yeah. Okay, keep going. Yeah. So um, he finally does tell them what the joke is. And they hold, re- hold on here. Hold on again here. He tells them after a lot of pleading. Yeah, a lot of pleading. Tell us a joke. No, no, no. But we showed on camera a lot of a pleading. A lot of pleading. And all of it was organic and real. And go ahead. Yeah. And he says, before he tells the story, he tries to butter him up. But this guy's in very good shape about the, the dermatologist. And it, it talks about trying to be too affable. And he tells them the whole story. And, and they reprimand, but they're very forgiving of him. I think everybody's very right. accepting and forgiving and you learned a lesson and all very forgiving and understand that he's trying to be too affable. And then but, who walks in? But wait, wait, wait. Here at this point, again, I said I associated with so much The nothing can ever come of. It was the doctor that saved Larry. Larry says the joke, which is dumb and, and a subtle joke. and bullshit. And their reaction is very negative to it until the doctor saves him. Right. So now they all forgive him and they, you know, reluctantly, but they, I thought they were very quite forgiving and it was kind of a nice scene and everybody's friends, friends, friends until he's about to leave. He, 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 the doctor examines Cheryl. He gives a prescription, calls it a prescription. Uh, that's another thing that Becca pointed out that was so different that no doctors hand you a prescription anymore. It's all done digitally. You go to the. Oh, no, 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 no. But but hold on. In this circumstance, because you wouldn't be ethical and he's there with them, doctors do hand you. They usually do it electronically. Right. Or, or call you know, it in. They, or call it in. Now, I know that. My point is, it was just yeah. another example of how times have changed. Yes. Is, is yes. what that another, was. Yes. And then, and then what happens? Then the woman who confronted him in the bathroom just two hours earlier, let's say, Saying, calling him a racist, that he didn't hire her as a script producer or a line producer. I, th- I forget which one it was. Enters the room and starts railing against him that he's a racist. If I may. Yes. If I may. I gave her her opening line, which she had made up. I said, when you walk out there, the first thing you're going to say when you see him is Mr. Larry David. Okay. Now, wait. Yeah. And that's how she opened when she that's walked right. out. She did. Which again got Larry. He burst out laughing. We had to reset and reset. He couldn't handle himself after Mr. Larry David, which he does often, not with Mr. Larry David. There's things that completely oh, tickle please. him. He ruins What's all that? my he ruins all my best takes. Um, By the way, can giggles. I say something to you? He really does. <laughs> not your best takes, because you're always great, but he does. If you liked your take, you're fucked. Yeah, Keep going. Because he giggles. And she starts going on, calling him a racist, 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 ranting, ranting, ranting about why he's a racist. And of course, they all turn on him and and he doesn't give her. Oh, by the way, what she's saying, whether Larry, that's called the best intentions, you're screwed because everything she's saying is true. It's true. Everything or could appear to be true. But she says, the man, La, Mr. Larry David, the man who refused to hire a sister because she, because he's yeah. a racist. And then on and on. And so Cheryl does not get the prescription. That's the whole point, is that Cheryl does not get the prescription. Then they're in the car again. And Larry is telling, she's scratching, scratching. You got to call the doctor. Of course, she can't call the doctor because wait, it's wait, not wait, a life-threatening emergency. I, I'm always going back. Hold go on, back. hold on. I'm always going to go back. The end of that scene, after she gives her speech, she said she ends it with what she did in the other one, except adding, she says, good evening. Yes, good evening. <laughs> That's her <laughs> That's, button. That was her last line, which yes. I thought was beautiful. She said all these angry things, then she ended it with, good evening. Very polite. I love that. Yeah. Um, now, Cheryl can't call the doctor because it's not a medical emergency. It's not a it's life-threatening a weekend, yeah. emergency. And Larry finally 
convinces her to call the doctor and she calls the doctor's pager. And then they're By home. the way, I want to add here, still, she's not losing her shit with Larry, yet he has fucked it up on every occasion. And she's understanding. She's put on, but she's understanding, even though we can see she's upset, but she lets it go in a real logical Larry David way. This is the who way he want. This is who he she chose to marry. Yeah. This is what you get. By the way, you're right. And later on, chooses to divorce. Keep going. And then uh, they're home staring at the phone, waiting for the doctor to call. And there's the vertigo music. It's suspense. It's the vertigo music yeah. from, from the, the Hitchcock yes. movie Vertigo. I, did they use Bernard Herrmann or did they do like a similar it, it, type of sound? Probably similar, but it was very similar. It was very so similar. So close. Yeah. But very, very similar. And what a great score. Bernard Herrmann, by the way, for those of you who don't know, was one of the greatest uh, composers for film ever. And he did a lot of Hitchcock stuff. And ever. Was that, did, did that, that, that suspenseful. Yes. And the phone rings and she hangs it up. And, you know, it's a life-threatening emergency. She could scratch herself to death. And finally, the doctor calls and says something about it's not a life-threatening emergency, of course, because he's being a bit of a Dr. Dick. But he does call in the prescription. Well, by the way, I, I got to say, um, in all sincerity, um, that I personally know, I always feel bad about calling a doctor, but I don't, I've never come across a doctor that has ever said, don't call me on weekends. Neither they have, have to I. encourage me to call on weekends for me to call on weekends, unless I, you know, have an emergency. This, we do a lot of doctor stuff on this show. Funny doctor yeah, stuff. But by the way, it's based on experiences yes. for him. So Larry goes to the pharmacy to pick up the prescription. It's very, very crowded. And the pharmacist tells him there's a 45 minute wait. And then we see Larry take that little folded up $20 bill. Larry goes to the pharmacist. It's very, very crowded. And then we see him take out that little rolled up tiny little square of a $20 bill that he never gave to the maitre d' at the restaurant. Again, the the puzzle, the callback, the, the, it all fits together. And we he looks at it and we know exactly what's going to happen. And you know it's not going to end well. And what does he do with it, Jeff? Uh, he hands it to the pharmacist. And, and the pharmacist he says, is I hear outraged. things are done. Just like he said to the, the maitre d', I hear things are done. And the pharmacist, <laughs> you know, this guy was fantastic who played the pharmacist. Do I look the And by the way, the he had the great line. No, no, the great line was, nobody no bribes, bribes a pharmacist. pharmacist. Do I look like I could be bribed? Which is a no great premise. No one bribes a pharmacist. He's indignant and, and Larry just slinks out and he's just home walking up the stairs completely dejected because now he's really, and now I think Cheryl's going to have had enough. We don't see it. The episode ends, but you know he's just slinking up those stairs because this is the last straw for her and she's been really, really patient and you know. No, she's miserable and she's scratching and he didn't get the fucking prescription. End of show. I would have cut cut that walk of him going up the, the stairs. The walk of shame. Feeling all the shit. Uh, well, the stairs of hell is what I wrote yeah. down. Richard Lewis. Uh, the stairs from hell. Anyhow, at the bottom of the stairs, I think everybody gets it. That you're looking at a guy who's about to take a walk to hell. Yeah. And it, by the way, it worked with him going up the stairs, but I always thought, I'm always thinking that way. I don't like a empty water cup for people to do their cup work, but also uh, I don't like telling us too much of the story. I like so. the walk up the stairs because I felt like it was well, a nice button. By the way, I agree with you. So there we go. And this episode <laughs> yeah. was directed by Brian Gordon. It was the first one that he directed. Oh, the first one Brian did. Yes, yeah, Brian yeah, yeah, Gordon, yeah, yeah. one of our... Brian we, Gordon, who used to write on Fridays. And that's where he knows Larry uh, from. Who is, I, I'm going to say this, about as lovely a man as there ever could be. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. And there we have... And a, a lovely wife, as ever could be. Yes. So there you go. Combo. Very dear friend of mine. And there we have affirmative action and uh, episode nine of season one. And we're done. One that I actually, when I watched it, I was so pleasantly surprised at how much I loved it. And this was also one of those episodes 
in and out, in and out, in and out. You know, you don't know where it's going. You don't know where, how much worse could it possibly get? Well, I think, and Larry will show you. I think also, you know, to the point that we were making in a few earlier episodes, starting with, with The Wire, episode six, this is where we, we really see the show has come into its own completely with, with beloved yeah, aunt, because this the is wire, also, beloved aunt, it's completely this is an come episode into its own. That's very similar to the future of yes, where Curb goes. Absolutely. But in this season, it stands out as different. Do you think so? Why? Because just, yeah, just because the way it goes in and out, none of the other episodes did this mm -hmm. up to this one. Mm -hmm. None of them. They had moments of it, but none of them were really the circle of how much worse can it get. Yeah. Which we see you know? many, many times. Because even in the, the wire, every the wire, yes, how much worse can it get? But very spread out. Yeah. Longer scenes in this, that one. Well, this, this was one, a very self contained storyline. There wasn't a lot of different storylines yes. here. You know? Hold on. The whole season, for the most part, except for a reference or two, are all individual yeah, storylines. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it got more I'm complicated curious to where, later. I don't remember offhand what season year three. we went into. Season three is when we went into the story. Arcs. What was season three? Season three was the restaurant opening. Arcs? Arcs. Oh, rest. That's the one from then on. It, every season. So there's only one episode from then on that, and I'll save this one, only one self-contained episode after, se after season three started. One. I think there's more than All one. All the others were on, were on point and on story. Uh, there's a couple. Each season, there seems to be one. We'll get to it. Really? Yeah. Oh, we will. Yeah. Okay. We will. And we'll see you next time. And uh, yeah, I'll be just as annoying next time. So I apologize to mm -hmm. anyone who hates me. Bye, Susie. I love you. Bye, Jeffy.